Hi everyone and welcome to my studio. My name is Eileen and I design dies for Sizzix. So uh, what we're going to use today is this die called the notepad and in our last video I showed you how to create a holiday version and this would be great for your lists and uh, recipes things like that um, but today we're going to create a more generic version for every day and to do that we're going to use some fabric scraps and these are beautiful they were sent to me by my friend Wendy and I don't know where she got them maybe at an upholstery store that was either going out of business or you know sometimes they discontinue the fabrics and um you know they don't need the samples anymore so anyway however it was she sent them to me and so we're going to use that die and we're also going to use some of the Sizzix cardstock to make pages for that book. Kind of a unique binding. So um, I hope that you will stay tuned and take a look. And while you're at it, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Follow me on Instagram. It's all Eileen Hall. Um, I do Facebook Lives twice a week on Tuesdays at 6 o'clock Eastern and Thursdays at 4. And uh, I also have the Eileen Hall Fan Club, which I would love you to join. If you do, please answer the questions. Okay, so let me put the camera down and we will get to work. So the supplies I'm going to use today mainly are the notepad die. I have some foam adhesive. And what that is is just basically a piece of fun foam that has adhesive on both sides. And that's going to help our fabric stick to the base that we're creating with. And then the last thing is the cardstock sheets that I'm gonna use from Sizzix to fill our book. And so this is the fabric that I found. And I mean, it comes in six inch widths, which to me was like a, a sign that I should use this. Um, here's the die. So you you can see that two of these are just gonna fit on here. So I really like this print and this I thought was nice for the back and you're gonna probably find strings all over the place, but you can go through with your lint roller after and pick them off. So the first thing that we're gonna do is make our base and so to do that we're going to use a piece of this double-sided foam and it's pretty sturdy and thick so that's good because I want something a little floppy you know flexible because it is fabric but I don't want it oh I had two sheets I don't want it uh totally um you know moving around a lot so this is should be perfect but we'll see. It's an experiment. I haven't tried this yet, but I thought you might like to see what happens. Now, on some of them, they have paper on the back, like this one. And that's okay, because we're going to use that to kind of stabilize it anyway, so that's okay. And to put it on the fabric, I just kind of line it up and flatten it out. And it's pretty easy. Now, what I would say for over here is that I'm going to cover that back up with this paper, because I can never remember which side of the paper. Um, I don't want that going on my die and sticking to it, so I will do that on the front and the back. I will cover that up again, okay? You could just peel it off to here, but it's not a big deal. Anyway, I'm going to add my other fabric to this. So I'm going to peel that off and put my fabric on here. It doesn't matter which way. Just line it up straight. Now this is kind of a directional, you know, it's got the line. So try and keep that straight, but it is going to be on the back. So don't worry. <laughs> okay. All right. So now we have this ready to go. And I'm going to run this through my Big Shot. All right, so I want this to be my cover because I think that's a really pretty print. So I'm going to put it on my die cut machine with my right side facing the die. And the reason I'm doing that is because my score lines are going to be built into the front cover, which will allow it to flex and bend. 
Um, it is a scoreboards die, which means there is a right and wrong side. If you're working with thick material as it's designed, uh, these lines here are going to imprint a fold line. Now on fabric, it sometimes works a little differently. So we'll, we'll see that in a minute. I'm just gonna, let's see, I need to go this way so that I have enough fabric for both. So that was a close call. <laughs> Let me get my other cutting pad. And I am not using my other pieces to the die. I'm just using the basic notepad cover. And on fabric, sometimes you get some strings that will want to kind of hang on. So I do run that through twice. See, here's, here are some. So we're gonna have to go through and snip them. That's not a big deal. Just get my handy little scissors and we will trim off the little strings that wanna hang on. Okay, so now I'm gonna cut my second cover. I'm just gonna chop these off to get them out of the way. And I'm gonna lay that down. Again, I don't think it matters which direction. Just wanna lay that straight. like this pattern. I don't want to have to start over. And I'm going to run that through three times actually because last time there were a good number of strings I had to cut. Okay, so let's see what we have here. Oh yeah, that's cute. Okay. Yeah, see where it joins. There are a couple little strands, but I mean if you think about it, it's going through a lot of layers of and this cloth is woven, so it's got a lot of strings to it. Okay, so now we have our two covers. Yay, I love these. Okay, and they do have a different feel than your normal uh, mat board because they can move and bend and you can see inside that's going to be our pattern and they came out nice and straight i'm happy with that so now we're going to put it together so we can figure out which one we like better i don't really care i guess i like that one better so i'm going to have this be the back and i'm going to tuck that under here and i'm going to glue that and let that set for a minute and then we're going to put some eyelets in here because that's how we're going to bind this one so I'm gonna take some of my art glitter glue and you could probably use fabric glue if you wanted or other whatever you like to use for this. Um, this time our, maybe not that glue though. Here's another one. I do find that this clogs. Okay, so now we're gonna glue this together and my other glue was clogged, so I've got another one. <laughs> Plan B. So I'm using, this is our glitter glue that's in a tube and I'm just gonna lay a pretty good bit of this on my score lines here because I want this to really adhere. And we are gonna use a second binding, which may not require this heavy duty application here, but I just want to make sure. And then we're going to clip this together with a couple of these. 
All right, so just make sure you find the end that has the score lines and lay that on top. And press it down and that looks pretty good. And then I'm just gonna clip it with these and hope, probably if you put it, oh, move down a little. Probably if you put this uh, under a heavy book, that would work too, or set of dies, stack of them. All right, so I'm gonna do that over here and let that sit for a little bit. Now we're gonna do the pages to the book. And this is really cool way to make these pages. And let me show you how they work. All right, so I went ahead. I'm not done with this by any means, but um, what happens is you can hold your artist trading cards in here. These are two and a half by three and a half, and you can tuck these into your pages and you even have these little pockets here to slide things. So this could be a great little wallet for your ATCs if you're into making them. Um, I have picked out pages that uh, coordinate with my paper and if you, I mean my fabric, that coordinate with my fabric and you can see here, they're, you know, they're close. So I made three pages. I'm gonna make one more here with you guys so you can see how to do it. So you're gonna need your scoring board and you're gonna need a piece of paper that is cut down to nine by eight, okay? So this one I'm gonna trim nine by eight and I'm gonna go on this side eight and nine this way. And the next thing that you're gonna need is your scoring board, like I said, and you're gonna need a bone folder. So, here's mine. And then we're just gonna follow the guideline over here. All right, so this is nine, so we're going to cut our score at four and a half down the middle. And then we're going to do an inch and a quarter on either side here. So one and one quarter and one and one quarter. Whoops. Ah. Okay, don't do that. I have luster wax on my phone folder. Okay, then we're gonna rotate this and we're gonna score down the middle, which this is eight, so we're gonna go in half. All right, okay, now we're just gonna take this and fold it on all these score lines. So, doesn't matter which direction we are, just gonna go ahead and re refold it when we get to the orientation that we want. So, okay, there we go. Now, what I did was I had the back of my pages, these here, these will be, these are the textured side, so that's what I'm gonna use. I'm gonna bend these up right here, okay? So I'm gonna bend these scores up. All right, now these are a little different than the original ones that I made. I decided I wanted a little deeper pocket, so I have adjusted this a little bit. I think my first fold was at um, one inch instead of an inch and a quarter. So you can adjust as you go. Now the next thing that you're gonna do is take your scissors and you're just gonna cut up to the middle fold here. Okay, good. All right, now what you're gonna do is come up from the middle and you're going to fold around and that's gonna form your pages here. And this inside here will be your little pockets, which is really fun. Now to prevent uh, some bulk in the corners here, we're just gonna trim off these little lines right here. So what I'm gonna do is bring this back out to the middle and I'm just gonna trim off a little bit there. And that 
should be good. Okay, so now we have a fun little booklet with, look at these, four little pockets and a pocket inside here and here. So six pockets. And these will form each like a little signature in our book. So that's basically how we do it, all right? So now what I'm gonna do is glue this together so that the pockets, um, you know, things stay in the pockets. And I'm already looking for my glue. There it is. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to glue these pockets so that they stay folded up, All right? And you can go back over this with your phone folder. It's actually better to put your glue on this flap so you don't go over up here. You know, you might go too high and you don't need it. And then just hold that for a second. And then in the end, what we're gonna do is cover this with washi just to give it kind of some um, fun. And on these, I, in the middle pocket, I just do the one corner and over here. You could use tape too if you wanted. And this is not really critical, but I find that it helps it fold just a little bit better. And then we're gonna do the last page and I do both of these. On either side where it's single, I do both sides, gluing it. Okay, and just hold that for a minute. Now we've got all of our little books that I wanna put inside my notepad, which is now a book, actually. I need to put lotion on my hands. Ah, it's getting to be winter. Okay, so let's put our washi tape on and that's very easy. We're just gonna take some of this cute butterfly washi tape and find the end of it. Ugh, I hate when I do that. I just kill the butterfly. Isn't this pretty? I can't remember where I got it, but I love it and I kind of hoard it. <laughs> All right, so let's trim off this guy and and also if you want to see samples of other ideas for this die, you can go over to the last video that I did in the Sizzix, and I think they have it on their YouTube channel also, uh, and see lots of samples from my team of ideas. You can close this in and use it as a box. There's so many ideas. So we're just going to finish putting this tape on. I'm going to trim it when I get them all on here. I'm trying to center the butterflies, but I'm having to chop off, you know, that's life. Sorry, butterfly. I got most of them on there. This is just such a pretty washi tape. It kind of gives a little difference because you can see when you fold it up, you don't have the texture on here, so it looks a little bit different. And we still have to adhere these two layers together, but it's easier to trim, trim the washi if they're not put together yet. Okay, now we're going to make our pockets, the inside pockets. All right, so this is what it should look like. Okay, and then we're just gonna do a little line of glue here and here. Oops, I see some more. And you don't have to do that, but you could cover that with also uh, some pretty paper if you have it or any other decoration, some lace would be pretty, you know, make it you. 
All right, and then we're just gonna fold that down. And that's gonna give us little pockets inside here, okay? So again, you wanna let this dry a little bit, but actually it stays pretty well just being folded with my hand. So, all right, let's put them all in the book. And that should be put together now, that should be dry. All right, so here we have our four little books. These don't have any cards in them yet, but I have them over in here. And these I made just by cutting down, um, this was some leftover adhesive that I had packaging, and so I need to cover the back of this. I just started on these, but you can make fun little ATCs here. Here's one that's kind of on its way. Um, I know I had a finished one somewhere. Um, Char Woman. You know, so I covered the front and back of just this base card that I had, and I might add a word or something on here, but um, you can collect all your ATCs. There is a, a big community out there of people. I didn't realize how many people do ATCs. They don't have to be this size, but they kind of started that way, and now that's the standard, but you don't have to. You can do circles. You can do whatever you like, as in all of these projects. Make it you. Okay, so now we have our glued binding here, and let's fit these in and see. This is going to be kind of flexible, which you might want to add on pages, you know. So let's go ahead and do our other little reinforcement here. What I thought I would do is add some eyelets to this because... We're going to have a lot of stuff going in here, and I want to keep it so that, so that the binding is strong. So what I'm going to do is take my crocodile, and I'm going to punch uh, two holes on either side. And I'm going to set my depth here so that they're all the same. Hopefully. That looks pretty good. Let's see how deep that is. Yeah, that looks good. So I'm going to center my holes here uh, in this score line, which I hope you can see. And you kind of get, give that a good, good squeeze there because you have a lot of stuff coming out of here. So you can trim these off after. And I'm going to do another one here. And then one at Oops, see, this is coming apart. So it's good that we're reinforcing this. Never know. It's a little different working with fabric and with paper. So it's fun to experiment. And also fun to come up with solutions for fixing what could possibly go wrong. And there's always something. All right, now we're going to take the other end of the crocodile. That's this piece up here. And then we're going to use this to set our eyelets. So I'm going to place these in where they go. And that's just going to help us when we go to string this. <laughs> There's a lot going on in this fabric, I have to say. All right, now you're really going to have to squish. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this end here and press that down pretty hard. And do that again over here. And we have these nice little eyelets. Okay, and that's going to keep it together. I could do more in the center. I might do that. I don't know yet. Okay. All right, I don't think it's going anywhere. But I might do another one, or I may add more glue. But for now, I'm just going to put this together. That's the back. Here's the front. And... You know, that actually would be nice with a couple more, but it would just be deck for decoration. I could also put a brad in there, which is more what I'm thinking, just like to hold that down, okay? And glue. All right, so now let's put our little books inside. And I think what I'm going to do first is I want to arrange the colors so they look how I want. And I kind of like that. And then I'm going to take some cording, 
which I happen to have this, and look at how well those colors all go together. I think I'm going to do this aqua color. I think that's pretty. So let's take that out. And all we're going to do is cut a length of this, and we're going to use it to string our book. So we're going to bind each one separately. And all I'm going to do is wrap this around here. And cut. Allow some for your knot. Center this cord. And it's a wax cord, so it's kind of nice. It's going to stay where you put it. All right, so just do that halfway. Then I'm going to cut another one for my gray. Do the same thing. Oh, that was way long. I always do that. And then I'm going to string these together through one of the holes, one of the sets of holes. And then I'll do the same on the back. And let's see, I wanted this to be the first and that to be the second. So I'm just going to pull these pretty tight. And I do have my front cover. Just make sure you're headed the right direction. And you have your front and back covers lined up. And then line, send these through those first eyelet holes. Okay. And I should have done those more evenly, but I'll do that next time. As I said, this is the first time I'm making this. Okay, so I think what I want to do is pull this a little bit and tie it up here, and then I can maybe add some charms. So let's make this a little bit more. You want to pull and make sure your books are tight into the spine. Not too tight, but tight enough so they're not loosely flopping around. All right. Just tie a knot up here, and then if you want to tie a bow or something, I think I'm just going to knot that. I like how that looks. And then I'm going to leave them, and we'll tie in our second batch. This is looking good. All right, so let's... I do like the feel of this waxed twine. This one, I'm going to cut two. It's the same. Okay. So we're going to do the same thing. And that I'm going to have to glue down. So I'm going to allow that to be a little bit longer because that's my top. I mean, that's going to be shorter. Bottom one will be longer. And we can adjust these again as we tighten. But honestly, with the wax twine, and that's what I'm kind of liking, um, it doesn't allow for a lot of moving around. You know, you could do elastic, too. I should have said that. You could do ribbon. You could use anything to tie this. I just happen to have this. I've had it for a while, and I wanted to use it, and it just, the whole set of them really went well with this fabric. So you can uh, take a look around. You can use fabric that you have in your house. You don't have to get it from an upholstery place or anything like that. You can use calico or, you know, whatever you have um, fabric-wise. It's all going to work the same way, pretty much. Um, now, this is a heavy-bodied um, fabric, so, you know, this is a little bit more sturdy than your cotton, you know, quilting or the stuff you get in the fabric stores, but um, I like the upholstery weight. So just make sure you pull that nice and tight, and then pull that around. So there we go. We have our two little binding strips and we have our book. Isn't that cute? I love how you can use all these pockets 
you know, I have to go through and make some more cards. But this is a really cute little ATC wallet. And then you can go ahead and make a closure. You could use elastic very simply. You could, uh, you know, use the pieces that came on the die to make a closure and just fold it over to snap it or Velcro. Um, I would use something pretty sturdy on here though. Uh, the last one we did, I punched a hole here and here and then just threaded elastic through, which would work fine. So anyway, this is your cute little wallet. So I hope that you will use some of these techniques. And um, if you do, please post them over on my page or in the Eileen Hall fan club, because we all like to get your ideas and see what you are creating, okay? So thanks so much for coming along with me today, guys. And um, we'll see you next time. I hope you make a fun little ATC wallet. Bye.